and a welcome to our webinar, Let's Learn Together, Enhancing Online Learning with Communities. Thank you for joining us. My name is Gary, and I will be the moderator for today's program. Blue Sky loves to have our attendees participating in the entire event, so before we get started, I'd like to cover a few items to help you maximize participation today. At any time, you may adjust your audio using any computer volume settings that you may have. You'll have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your question into the Submit Questions Here pod on the right side of your screen. Let's get started with the introduction of today's speakers, Heather McNair, Vice President of Engagement Strategy with Higher Logic, and Jody Ray with Blue Skype. Heather is a well-regarded thought leader with 20 years of marketing, technology, customer acquisition, and retention experience. She is adept at leveraging technology to increase customer engagement and is a frequent speaker and writer on the subject. She is responsible for developing effective ways of improving traffic in online communities and defining best practices, as well as overseeing the managed services and education teams. Higher Logic is an industry leader in cloud-based community platforms. Organizations worldwide use Higher Logic to bring people all together by giving their community a home where they can interact, share ideas, answer questions, and stay connected. Their goal is to help organizations with deeper engagement and meaningful interactions for members and constituents. Jody has partnered with associations for over 25 years to find the right solutions to help manage and deliver their education to reach more people more effectively. She works with partners and clients to provide the best online learning and event solutions through Blue Sky eLearns technology and services that include webinars and webcasts where they help deliver a streamlined, engaging, and professional event for presenters, attendees, and organization staff. And Blue Sky's award-winning PATH platform is a state-of-the-art cloud-based learning management system that is quick to implement and manage with a clean, modern, and intuitive interface for on-demand access that can be easily monetized and tracked. It also integrates with best-in-breed solutions like GoTo and Adobe Connect webinar platforms, over a dozen AMS platforms, and higher logic. With that, I'd like to turn things over to Jody to get us started. Jody? Thank you, Gary. So today, I'm going to first, really, I'm going to address what associations are facing in the learning industry and why those challenges present opportunities, uh, which is why it's so important to be addressing the challenges uh, strategically and timely. Then Heather uh, will be, get back to my next slide there. She's going to be highlighting why successful learning is enhanced uh, by social learning and is really an important part of the entire learning system, ecosystem, really. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up our time together uh, to share examples of what this could look like for you to implement. Uh, we're going to leave some time for Q&A, so I'd encourage you to, to jot down your questions at any time uh, throughout our time together in the Q&A pod. And you'll also see that the, the chat pod is up down below the slide deck. And so if you have any comments or suggestions you want to share with your peers, we welcome you to do that as well. Uh, and um, we're going to really thank you for participating today. We're going to end with our infamous randomizer, and I call it our winner spinner. Uh, basically, one of you logged in at the end or will be the lucky winner of some Blue Sky services. Um, also, you'll notice um, to the right there's a, a pod that has some suggested resources, and that just goes back to where you're registered, and there's a, a resource tab there with some things that might be helpful as you start looking at this social learning um, in your own um, world. So as a final note, um, just know that you're going to receive a link to the, to the recording as, um, as well for this event. So if you want to review something or share it with somebody, you can. So with that said, let's get rolling. All right. Have you all been feeling the impact of some pretty significant changes in our world? Likely. <laughs> so, well, the, di the digital shift is definitely being felt in the event and learning industry. Uh, and if you're like those that I talk to daily, you're probably feeling the rapid pace of these changes are coming at you like a fire hose. Uh, organizations and learners are now global, mobile, and social. So today, people expect to, to access almost everything digitally. And when they do, they expect an Amazon-like experience. Uh, they want to access the content that is meaningful to them at a particular time in their career, at a, any time of the day or night, and really on any device. 
They want to make purchases easily and confidently, and they want it all served up quickly. They want um, really whatever is the latest and greatest they want to get their hands on. And another shift is our traditional learning system. Uh, so if you have any students like myself <laughs> in your world, uh, they're graduating with larger debts and they're coming out without job skills they can often use. Uh, and with frequent job changes, people living longer and overall fast paced changes in industries themselves, we're essentially facing the other 50 years uh, once we exit our formal educational systems. So lifelong learning, professional development, continuing education, it's no longer that nice to have. It's really a must have for most of us. And with these shifts, it is essential that our learning programs deliver rock star learning when and where our learners need it, and that it's gonna support peer collaboration when it's appropriate. And a blended learning experience that combines multiple learning methodologies is gonna be the most effective in meeting the learner's needs. So really the bottom line is that those of you who capitalize on this modern learner and deliver high quality education that is accessible, timely, social, and on target to learner needs uh, will be the ones who come out on top and be seen as the go-to resource. And if your organization is not, it's likely that they're gonna be finding it elsewhere. So let's reflect a, a moment on the bigger picture of associations. Uh, what makes your association relevant and successful? Uh, we see the um, really value and benefits associations provide most often include education, advocacy, news, industry, competency, and community. Uh, the reality is learning touches, or it really can touch all of these components. Uh, across generations and industries, the data shows professional development as the biggest driver of engagement and value received. So typically, the main goals of online learning can fall into one or more of the following. You're either trying to attract a specific audience or new members, you're trying to build brand recognition and industry relevance, increase revenue, or pardon me, retention and member value, and create those new revenue streams. So I know that those are all important, but if you had to pick kind of two of those, um, what, let's get a pulse kind of on what our peers think kind of where those would fall. It's changing as we go. It looks like member retention is um, coming out on the top and member value. And then building brand recognition is comes in second. And then revenue streams and then attracting a specific audience. Great. Thank you, everybody, for sharing um, feedback on that. It, they definitely are, are all important. It's sometimes it's hard to, to pick the top top two. Unfortunately, it, at the end of the day, the way many associations are serving these needs, um, the education, advocacy, community, um, it's, it's falling short, and it's falling short for a number of reasons. Associations are working with multiple vendors, um, and that's really delivering incons inconsistent experiences. And they have data that just doesn't jive uh, because there's various technologies without a viable strategy uh, that is instead just kind of getting duct taped together. So we see this leaves a lot to be desired and the opposite is really happening of what we just discussed. Uh, there's a lack of relevance in member, member value. Non-dues revenue is not getting maximized and members are not retained, let alone new ones uh, being recruited. Actually, according to a recent Gartner study, 89% of companies report they expect to compete mainly on the basis of customer experience. And if you're going to be able to provide a leading edge experience, you need a comprehensive digital foundation to be able to respond to the rapidly growing list of challenges or shifts that we just talked about. So we see this ecosystem 
uh, for Rockstar Learning is taking the best in breed technologies and services and having them all work fluidly together to provide the best opportunity for engagement and growth so you don't just maintain, but you're going to thrive. So let's look at some of those things in the ecosystem uh, that are important. The community, uh, providing social peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, your database um, uh, where you're really streamlining access and centralizing data to better analyze uh, what's working and what's not. Marketing automation where you're delivering the right information to the right person at the right time. Having really learning um, engagement and personalization. Uh, keeping the learners excited about the learn their learning journey and feeling like it fits just what they need, both in content and the learning style when they need it. Monetization, so offering multiple methods to increase revenue. Uh, tools to do, do this might include subscriptions, product bundles, coupons, different group pricing, maybe gold members get it for X and students get it for Y. Um, and then tying in live events. Uh, really is, is one of the most popular digital learning tools. So really by leveraging this ecosystem, you can easily manage the delivery of your learning products and provide your end users a seamless experience between multiple platforms uh, to keep them happy and coming back time and time again, resulting in the increased member retention, growth, and uh, more non-dues revenue. So let's focus on the learning experience, specifically around the LMS and virtual events. Why do you think this is important uh, in the ecosystem and kind of the experience age? Well, we, we found um, that your end users, they want to access education anytime, anywhere, and they don't want to remember another password or go to multiple locations to access content or credits. And then end users, they want to quickly find the content that's going to be applicable to them. It could be a specific topic on a late-breaking live webinar or a recorded webinar or a self-paced course or even a practice exam, for example. And even the experience of the purchase makes a difference. Uh, one of our clients had um, really a seven or eight click process that their learners had to go through to buy content. And when they moved um, to, to our, our, our system, it ended up with two because there was an integration with the, their AMS. And, but they said the ease of use was one of the factors in their revenue increasing by 379% when they compared the same three months just one year later. So let's face it, if, if you get frustrated when you want to buy something, you may actually not make the purchase and you're certainly not going to come back to make other purchases. And also, with so many distractions and options, uh, the users need to be kept engaged and the content and uh, with the content. And they need to be engaged with their peers in both live and on-demand content for the learning to be the most effective. And let's not forget the experience for your staff, not just the end users. Because if your staff are frustrated and stressed, then likely they are not making the best use of time uh, to deliver effective learning, or even sending your learners to your educational programs. Uh, and your staff, they also need to quickly and cost-effectively implement that quality education. And then they need to be able to pull analytics and reports for your ROI and be able to identify learning gaps so that they can make improvements. And your organization also needs to count on really simple, transparent, and flexible pricing uh, to avoid surprises and be confident um, that adjustments can be made as, as your needs in the association change. So the bottom line is that to give end users and staff the kind of experience that sets your organization apart from others and ensures success, you really need first-rate services wrapped around a, a rock-solid technology. So let's take another poll. Uh, we have two polls uh, to learn a little bit more from each other. Um, first one, which of the following are you utilizing to deliver engaging learning to your industry? And you can choose all, all that apply.
webinars. We are we. That's definitely what we're seeing in the industry is coming out on the top, the learning management system, and communities. If you do have other and you want to put that in your um, in the live discussion pad, you could do that. Kara Adams has said podcasts is another way to do it. Fantastic. Great. I'm going to come back to that. Keep keep sharing in the in the, the live discussion pod. The other thing is you're is you're starting to fill out is how do you rate the effectiveness of your e-learning ecosystem? So one not being at all effective and five being highly effective. So a lot of people kind of falling in the middle there. It's being somewhat effective, I guess I would say. Great. And Emily has said podcasts, training videos, simulated webinars or webcasts, and large training conferences. Excellent. Mary had virtual live online training. Fantastic. Keep keep sharing. Excellent. Well, one of the things um, that it might be just curious to know, in a recent survey um, that included some of the top complaints of an LMS, it was limited social learning actually fell into the top five. Uh, I think it was actually number three. So that really brings us to the importance our industry is placing on the value of learning being social. And the reason uh, for Heather, uh, with her, with La Higher Logic, to really share more with us about how we can enhance online learning with communities. So go ahead and take it away, Heather. Thanks so much, Jody, and thanks for, uh, to everyone for joining us today. Um, so I was excited to see that over half of you, almost 60%, said that you do have a community that you're using to deliver online learning. Um, so, uh, so we have another kind of follow-up poll here. Um, I, let's see, I think, or actually, what's this? Ah, da, da, da. Um, coming up here in just a second, I guess. So, um, so one of the things that we've found, and uh, and Gary mentioned early on in my bio that I also run Higher Logics Education Department. And so a lot of the things that you guys are learning and, you know, and challenged with in your own organizations, I'm dealing with the same thing within Higher Logic uh, as we're growing, getting more clients and figuring out how to keep them educated and up to speed on, you know, the, the changes within community management, within the industry, uh, and, you know, and within our software as well. Um, and so, you know, we've found that, you know, that we need to move to online learning because of the efficiency, its scalability. You know, Jody mentioned being able to reach members, you know, when they need the education, where they need the education, you know, and those opportunities to hit people, you know, with like mini education, you know, when they're standing in line, um, you know, at the grocery store or at the pharmacy, you know, those quick little, you know, can we educate someone within a couple of minutes here and there? Uh, and, you know, and so one of the things that we've been doing, we uh, released a new education strategy here for at Higher Logic and have looked at, you know, every everything, every topic that we need to educate members on or our clients on. Um, we say, you know, how how is or what is the best channel to educate them on? Uh, and, you know, and Jody also mentioned that um, that you can uh, deliver things in multiple channels, you know, so that you can you can get people the way they want to learn. Uh, and so, you know, we're trying to do that as well. Um, and, you know, so we've moved a lot of our education um, to, you know, to an online format as well as 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 well as in person, we really focused on in person learning uh, for the, our first several years of existence as a company. Um, and uh, and you know, and the the one great thing about um, or in person education, and you guys have seen this, you know, with your events as well, is that people get to learn from each other. Uh, you know, it's one of the great things about being at a conference or being at a seminar uh, is those kind of hallway conversations or the conversations that happen, you know, as we're sitting next to each other, uh, waiting for a session to start. Um, but, um, you know, and that, then that's been the hard thing about, you know, the online learning and, and LMS is, is you're missing that element of it. Uh, and so Emily, yeah, I saw Emily's 
uh, comment in here about uh, defining community. Uh, so for our purposes today, um, there's a lot of definitions of community, uh, but for our purposes today, we're talking about an online community. Um, so, and that can take various forms. Listservs are one form of them uh, that have been around for many, many years. Uh, it can be an online discussion forum. Uh, it can be um, really any kind of online mechanism or electronic mechanism um, where people can exchange information. Uh, and it's usually done kind of in a user-generated content format. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, so it doesn't, and we'll talk about this a little bit more um, in the next couple of slides. Uh, so it, it tends to be in a, in a less structured format than in a learning management system. Um, so yeah, so this poll, you guys are already jumping all over it. Um, how are you currently making your learning offerings social? Uh, yeah, the community that we were just talking about, uh, discussions and commenting features. Uh, so a, a lot of learning management systems do have that kind of built in, uh, and you know, as well as you know, after you read an article, um, some of your content management systems on your websites have that built in as well. Uh, social media. You know, Facebook, LinkedIn, those type of, uh, you know, Twitter, those type of venues, uh, and other, and again with other. Um, if you want to throw something in the chat box about what the what your those twelve percent of others are, um, and it looks like yeah, so a few of you are using community, um, but uh, um, it looks like most of it is happening in discussion and commenting features. Um, so this is good. So we'll talk more about how you can incorporate community into it. All right. Um, so, so one of the things that we found um, is that it doesn't have to be this all or none proposition of, you know, does it have to be this, this vetted, uh, you know, this vetted content of a learning management system um, or or the, the community where it's kind of the wild, wild west and it's just people teaching each other. Um, if you incorporate these two concepts together, um, the professional subject matter experts or in the professional subject matter um, with peer-to-peer, -peer, you end up with the, really the best of both worlds. And you can deliver it in an online format just like you, know, you have the, the recipe for success that we've developed for years um, in in-person learning. You can translate that into an online environment. All right. All right, so we do have, oops, I went too far there. Now we've got some funky graphics going on here. Um, but uh, the idea behind this slide, we'll back this up a little bit, um, is that uh, you know the benefits of an LMS, obviously, is you have vetted information. You, it's reliable information. People know that they can trust it. Um, it's been vetted by you guys. It has, you know, there are quizzes in there. There are tests. Um, and there are verifiable learning outcomes. So you know that these are hitting the mark or they're not hitting the mark. Um, but there's little or no interaction in most LMSs. They may be able to interact with the instructor, uh, but that is typically about it. And to Jody's point, the survey that they did or that came out um, said that most LMSs are really lacking in that social interaction uh, aspect. Uh, with a community, um, the upside is that it provides great learning opportunities from their peers. Um, but the downside is the, the lack of vetted content. Like I said, it's kind of the wild, wild west. Um, you really don't know, and there's no quality control over what people are telling each other. Um, you know, someone can say something, um, and you know, there are times, you know, I've worked for associations before, and you know that you know, there are times people make comments, and you're like, oh, God, that's not true. Um, and you have to get someone out there to, to correct it and comment, it, comment on it so that you know your members are walking away with the right information. Um, so when you combine the two of them, um, it is a recipe for success. Um, and people can get um, guidance from their peers. Um, they can get support from their peers, um, but you can control the quality of the content. They can get that professional learning. Some examples that we've seen um, be very successful. You know, we've been testing this for a while. Our clients have been testing this for a while. Um, study groups 
uh, for especially like around certification programs, that kind of thing, uh, have been very successful. Uh, we found, you know, with a with a structured format, um, some kind of leader out there, uh, you know, each week saying, you know, hey, this week we're going to focus on this topic, uh, or you know, and kind of relating back to, you know, if you have uh, an ongoing course. Uh, in your LMS, um, and then you have a coordinating discussion happening in the community. Um, one of the other elements that we found very successful there um, is to keep people in the online community who have participated um, in that certification in the past, uh, so or that you know whatever the, the course is in the past, so that they can offer advice to those people uh, who are going through the course today. Uh, it does typically have to be very closely watched um, so that, or you have to establish the rules so that you know people aren't giving the, the new people answers and the questions to the exam. Um, but by and large, you know, they studied really hard for it and so they're not going to, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to make it easy for someone else. Uh, you know, they're, they're not going to make the path easier for someone else. Um, the other thing that we've found successful is, you know, if you have like a, uh, a coordinated group of courses, um, you know, so paths or tracks, uh, you know, if there are like five or six related courses um, that you want people to move along um, that path, uh, that that tends to be very successful. Um, or, you know, where a single course is can be successful or community for a single course if it's long term uh, or if it's for a very complex topic. Um, typically, a community for a single course, um, for a, you know, sh a short course, a pretty straightforward topic, you're not going to see a lot of traction in the community around that. Um, there's just not enough meat for people to dig in and to really need that peer-to-peer -peer support there. Um, so it's really the more complex stuff that we've seen um, seem really get some traction there. Um, and we recently did a study, well, actually one of our clients, the Certified um, oh, it's a Financial Planners Board or the Board of Certified Financial Planners, uh, they, uh, they did a study with uh, Marketing General and they found that people who participated in their community, they have an online community for um, people who are going through their certification program, um, people who were active in their community had a 69% pass rate uh, for their certification versus their people who they qualified or they categorized as no participation, meaning they had not logged into the community whatsoever, um, only had a 58% pass rate. So 11% difference um, between those two, or 11 percentage points, I should say, difference between those two groups, which is really substantial. Um, they were very excited to find that the community was making that big of a difference. And they've only been launched for about a year. Um, so this is still, you know, they're still learning, they're still playing with that formula, and it's already making that big of a difference. Um, so, you know, really exciting, um, at, you know, initial steps here and initial data showing that these communities, you know, bringing people together in a peer-to-peer -peer learning environment can really make a difference around certification programs and that kind of thing. Um, one of the other exciting things that we're seeing happen um, is around data. Um, Jody was mentioning a lot about um, you know removing barriers, trying to make this as simple as possible for people to uh, to uh, you know, to participate in um, and you know, to really drive engagement uh, and in our integration, you know, with Blue Sky with the with the LMSs. Um, that's that's been one of our a key initiatives in this is to try to make it as seamless as possible. Um, you know, we found, you know, over the last 10 years that if you can remove every single barrier that you possibly can to participation, you know, the things that seem really simple to us and silly, you know, like Jody was saying, remembering one more password. Like, we all have so many passwords that we have to remember. Like, what's the big deal for one more? You'd be amazed <laughs> at how remembering one more password can really deter participation. Um, so, you know, single sign-on is absolutely critical between your community and your LMS and your AMS or CRM system. One login, all three systems, people can move, and true single sign-on. 
Um, so not just the same login, but they log into one entity and they're logged into all three. Um, and they can move between the three of them seamlessly. Absolutely, you know, a, a critical part of the success. And they shouldn't really even feel that they're moving um, around, you know, into these different prop online properties. Um, you know, the other thing is being able to pass data back and forth um, between all three systems. Um, we have an integration with PASS, like the Blue Sky LMS, um, where we can bring in information on, you know, people who have started a course, people who've completed a course, um, you know, whether they've uh, earned a certificate or a credit, then, you know, all sorts of things. That feeds back into their profile, their community profile. And so we can show, and it's really small on here, um, but we can show that on their profile. Uh, so they can basically have an online transcript, transcript on their community profile. Um, and in addition to that, we can use that to trigger um, other, uh, other actions. Um, so we can, there's badges on here that we'll talk about in a minute, badges and ribbons and putting people into these learning communities automatically. Uh, again, removing that barrier to participation. Um, and we can also write that data then from the LMS and you know, from us into your AMS or CRM system or a third party data warehouse. Uh, and where this gets really exciting, and this is where I turn into a total data geek, um, is the business intelligence that you can glean when you start bringing in all of these different data points. Um, you know, with you know, when you're just looking at the data in your AMS or CRM system, you know, people typically only have a handful of transactions uh, in the AMS. They, they renew their membership. They may attend your annual conference. Um, you know, they might buy, you know, a course or something like that. So you may have three or four data points that they've created with you over the course of a year. Um, but if you're capturing what they're doing in the LMS, uh, and in, within the community, so they're posting uh, to the community, they're replying to, uh, you know, to someone else's discussion post, they're viewing pages, they're searching on something. You know, they're, they, that can create hundreds of data points. Um, and if all of that is getting written back into some kind of data warehouse uh, or, you know, somewhere where you can do some data visualization on it, you can get some really good actionable business intelligence. Um, I was talking to one of our clients yesterday, and he said that they're they're working on this right now. They're putting this into a data warehouse, and they're bringing in their LMS information, the community information, um, actually information from one of their publications. They have an electronic publication, um, and you know, so they can see what people are reading, um, and they're taking all of that um, and informing. They have a huge education program. And they're using that information to figure out, like, what of their learning, um, you know, what of their education actually needs to be updated on a more frequent basis. He said, you know, we've got a small staff. We can't update everything all the time. So, you know, they're basically kind of doing a heat map on it. What are people actually using? And we're going to focus on that stuff and update that on a regular basis. And we're not going to worry about the stuff that people really aren't using. Um, you know, we may just update that once every couple of years and focus on the stuff that people really are using on a regular basis. Um, so there's some really cool stuff that can happen when you're bringing all of these data points together. Uh, and I mentioned bringing in that data from from past, from you know, from your LMS, um, and making that actionable just within the community. Um, so I said we can add learners to those learning communities. Um, you know, removing that barrier. We'll put them in there automatically. They don't have to go search for the community, um, you know, and you don't have to ask them to subscribe to find it. We just put them in there automatically, send them a welcome email. Hey, you're part of this community. If you don't want to be part of it, here's how you opt out. Uh, we can also send them emails. Uh, we've got these automation, if you're familiar with marketing automation, there's a similar capability within the system. Um, that can, uh, you know, send them emails to encourage participation both in the community and uh, within the uh, LMS courses. Uh, so if they stall out on a course um, or, you know, if they've registered and they haven't started it yet, they, there can be prompts to them to keep them moving along. 
um, and then also adding badges and ribbons to their profiles. Um, and that gets into the whole gamification concept, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, once they complete a course or earn a certification, um, those badges, ribbons can go onto their profile. Um, there's also the ability, I don't know if we have any gamers in the audience today, um, but you can show not only what they have achieved, um, but also what's left to be achieved, what they still can achieve. Um, so the idea of, you know, what's next? Um, so if they've completed, you know, a certain number of courses, uh, but they still have, you know, one more course to complete, uh, then that is grayed out on their profile. And you can link that to information about the course um, or a registration page for that course. Um, you can also create leaderboards uh, based on this information to show, like, you know, who has completed the most courses, who's earned the most points around something. Uh, there's also this concept of shamification, um, so you can see what, you can let others see what their peers have done. You know, hey, Jody's completed five courses, but, you know, Heather's a slacker and she's only done one. I'm going to feel bad about that and I'm going to get off my rear and go in there and start completing some more courses so that the next time I see Jody, I'm not ashamed of myself. Um, and there's also the opportunity um, to create personalized dashboards um, within the, you know, within your website, within the Higher Logic system, um, to show, hey, these are my current classes, uh, and unfortunately, this, uh, my achievements got cut off here. But once someone has completed their courses, you can show that these are the courses that they have completed. So they get a nice page that sums up everything that they're doing and everything that they've completed. And then this is an example, um, you know, again, trying to make this as seamless as possible for the users. Um, this is an example, actually, of the higher logic, uh, the integration between the, uh, the LMS and uh, the community. So the LMS is completely, uh, well, is embedded within the community. The community is wrapped around it. Um, so if you guys are familiar, I think I saw a couple of our clients um, on, the, uh, on the list here of attendees. Um, so this will look very familiar to you guys. It's within the context of the community. And you can just, you know, so people are in the community. The discussion group is there. Um, instead of a list of people who are in the community, it's a list of the learners who are in there. We've basically just gone in and relabeled some of those uh, regular community characteristics. Um, and it'll show you who your instructor is, um, and you just fire off the course from within here. Um, but then you can pop right back in here and um, contact other people who are taking the course directly or jump in here. Um, Let's see. Jump in here, ask a question of those other learners. You know, if you want to be you know, part of the general discussion, you can have additional resources in the resource library that's part of the community. Uh, or like I mentioned, you've got the, the other learners there if you want to see who's, who else is participating or contact one of them directly. Let's see, Jody. I think this may have been your slide. Yeah, super. Thank you so much, Heather. That was awesome stuff. Awesome. All right. So, um, continuing with Heather's great thoughts uh, and insight, uh, the LMS and community working together really helps you become your own, what I really consider almost your educational Amazon. When you have a customized and branded LMS site uh, where you can easily uh, create and manage multitudes of learning and event content um, that really become the hub of your organization, um, really for your, for your organization and your learners, then you become the trusted go-to source for relevant and personalized content. All right, so would you like to see some examples of how you can use your community and LMS together. I'm going to expand on this of some of those examples a little bit. 
So one of those um, is really having a standalone site that is integrated into that complete ecosystem that we discussed. Um, the user can come to the site from the community without having to remember another password, or they can come right to the LMS site itself. So it's the home where learners can search across content of the site, they find of interest, um, or they can be directed to paths of content that might be recommended to them. And then the user right back to the community enables uh, really helpful automation engagement that Heather discussed, like completing a course or starting a course that puts them into a specific communities or sends them emails or maybe serves them up a badge. Another example is being a, you could actually embed a discussion widget from your community into a course description or even um, a specific learning element like a video description or a practice test. Um, for our particular system, the Path, um, Blue Skies Path LMS, uh, we have a description area uh, in just all kinds of spots throughout the, the LMS that are made of WYSIWYGs. What you see is what you get. So not only can you adjust fonts and embed images and links to, to really customize the look and feel of that, but you can embed HTML code um, for that community widget. Another example is simply linking um, to a community within a course to encourage peer interaction and collaboration. Uh, and we often see this uh, kind of where there's those practice exams or board review courses. That's how they were saying it's kind of one of the, the popular use cases. Or you could embed uh, learning into content right into the community. Um, just kind of following up on, on Heather's example, um, specifically in that higher logic community, an administrator just adds a library entry into the catalog and they use the webinar link um, to add a URL to a course. And that could include the entire course that might include videos, tests, documents, surveys, instructor-led assignments, and scorm content. It can be an entire kind of course path, or you could even embed content in the, into the community with one specific piece of that content, like maybe it's just a webinar recording, or maybe it's just a survey. Uh, and then the entry um, can include, like I said, a description with metadata that can be searchable within the community. On an exciting note, uh, just stay tuned with Higher Logic and, and Blue Sky um, because we'll, we'll be sharing some news about integrated search capabilities and some enhanced recommendation engine features as well. And uh, what I think is also really pretty cool is, you know, as you know, a lot of people are looking for kind of that white label, kind of that really mimicking the website look and feel, and. Uh, the, the path LMS actually you can embed or iframe right into your LMS site, or pardon me, you can embed your entire LMS site into your community um, or even your association website. So it really helps maintain that look and feel. Um, the we have a what's one we we've called uh, I guess an intelligent iframe. So it's kind of goes above and beyond a typical iframe. Uh, where it's going to maintain um, your Kind of the navigation, the links, so you can be, you can hit your back button. It kind of maintains all of that navigation. But the important piece of it is you're not building kind of two sites to maintain that look and feel, where you can have, you know, take a lot of time and effort and thus money um, to kind of recreate the, the the look and sites, the look of the site, as well as there's a huge opportunity <clears throat> to have some of that inconsistent navigation and broken links. So we find that it's been a really um, great kind of answer to that um, kind of white labeling or customization of it. All right, so we are nearing the last 15 minutes here. So let's open this up to some questions. And Emily has been doing a great job of kind of creating some, asking some questions and even doing it in the, 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 the live discussion pod as we're going. So thanks for doing that, Emily. Um, well, I'll just I'll open it up um, to, to Gary for this. Then we're going to come back and do our spinner for a winner, and then we'll we'll send you to the an evaluation that we'd really appreciate filling out. Great, thank you, Jody. Thank you, Heather. Uh, just a reminder before we start the Q and A portion of today's program that if you'd like to submit a question, you can type your question into the submit questions here pod, which is on the right hand side of your screen. Our first question. 
Uh, is there a perceived preference between a community of an entire association's membership versus a subset of the membership? Oh, that's, you know, it really has to do with the purpose of the community. And, you know, and they, they really serve two, um, well, two distinct purposes, but I, I would say two distinct, but it's really multiple distinct purposes. You know, we found a community that uh, that serves the entire association's membership is really, you know, we tend to call them open forums, but our clients have many different names for them. Um, but they are one of our best practices, obviously, depending on the size of the membership. We do have organizations that have over 100,000 members, and that makes for a really big community, uh, which, you know, that's a, that's a whole other strategy discussion. Um, but, um, but those tend to be a, um, you know, a best practice. We found that they work extremely well. Uh, and it's a really good place for people to start, for our clients to start. Um, but then you do have these smaller sub-communities, if you will, uh, and you know there are committee communities and work groups and that kind of thing that have very dedicated purposes uh, that you know can also coexist with that open forum. Uh, and you know, with learning communities, uh, you know, it, it is a you know it's a similar concept to like a work group um, if they have a very distinct purpose. Uh, and people understand what they are for, um, as opposed to that open forum. You know, the open forum tends to be the place where I go to ask, you know, kind of really any question uh, that you know that I may have that I you know that I need to do my job better. Um, you know, versus my, you know, the community about my CAE certification. You know, I'm studying for my CAE certification, and I have a very specific question about, uh, you know, the you know, I'm 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 studying for it. I'm going through my, you know, my workbook, and I don't understand. You know, the you know it says the answer is A, uh, and I really think it should be B, and I don't get why. You know, can someone explain the difference to me? Um, or you know, if in the case um, one of the organizations associations I used to work for, we had um, we had a certification. And we had an instructor who actually who led it, um, and every week she would post a basically a problem, uh, you know, for the group. We you know each week she'd go through. I think there were like nine disciplines in the body of knowledge, uh, and so she'd pose a different problem that had to do with that, that week's discipline in the body of knowledge. And uh, you know, and it was kind of a, basically like a word problem. If you want to take us back to uh, take us back to high school, uh, and uh, you know, and and let the group kind of work through those problems together, uh, and you know, and so they have a very unique, distinct purpose, and it's very clear, uh, as opposed to you know, the open forum is just kind of you know, hey, you know, I'm. Uh, my boss has asked me to develop a new best practice around, um, or you know, or, or a new budget worksheet or whatever it may be. Does anyone have an example of one? Um, so yeah, so then they can coexist very well as long as people are very clear on what one should be used for versus the other. Does that answer your question, Miles? All right, the next question, does the higher logic LMS provide their user interface in languages other than English? Yes. So I, I can answer, well, I can answer for the higher logic part of it, and I think Jody can answer for the uh, the LMS portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, yep, so high, the higher logic part of it, yes. Um, we have clients who have sites in you know, everything from, you know, I should say, as easy as Spanish um, to as complex as Arabic languages. So, Yeah, and for the Blue Sky, uh, we currently, our, our system text has English, uh, French, Spanish, and Chinese, uh, and we continuously add new ones based on what our clients are, are looking for, and that adjusts the system text. And then we have a lot of clients who actually upload content itself that's, you know, translated already into to some specific langu languages. Uh, one of our clients, RIMS, has specific courses just set up in Spanish, and you can filter down by all of those, you know, that content that, that is in Spanish as well. All right, the next question, what are the points of integration between Higher Logic and Blue Sky's PATH LMS? All right. Um, yeah, go ahead, Heather. 
Oh, no, I was, I was going to say, we, we can help each okay. other out on this one, Jody. <laughs> yeah, and, and you actually, you co- you're covered it. I mean, in, in your 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 um, section as well, it's really um, the single sign-on. Um, also, and then the right, it writes it back uh, when somebody's started a course, completed it, uh, a course, or when, like, credits or a certificate have been earned. And that's really where the power is because that can help uh, what really is going to unlock all of that um, automation uh, of, of higher logic that unlocks the badges, you know, puts them in the community, may start a, um, uh, uh, an email um, so that they, you know, are, have recommended recommendation to certain courses and things. And the next question, we have toyed with the idea of a learning community. Do you have any tips or tricks to make one successful? Um, sure. So, I, and I touched on this briefly on one of my slides. I, you know, I think, I think the thing that we've found that make them most successful, and this is actually true of, you know, to some extent of, of all of our communities that we found successful, they need to have an owner. Uh, and, you know, and someone driving it. I think, you know, particularly with learning communities, they need to be structured. Uh, you know, with the example of the certification communities, especially that, uh, you know, that I've seen the most success with, it is, you know, someone uh, posting to it on a, like a weekly basis, giving people homework, starting that conversation each week, uh, you know, having a topic out there. Um, you know, when you just tend to put a community out there and saying, you know, hey, there's a certification study group, uh, you don't tend to see a lot of success with it. Uh, you know, people, someone needs to be leading the charge and, you know, seeding conversation. And, you know, and it, in, you know, with any of our communities, we were really big fans of, you know, seeding questions, seeding conversation. Um, but in learning communities, it needs to be even more structured. Um, to to really show people kind of model the behavior and show people how you want them to be used, um, and so yeah, so you know with a with a study group type of learning community, it's like okay, so week one, we're you know this is what you know we're going to use it for, um, and you know, and and to have you know someone driving that type of behavior in it. All right, we don't appear to have any other questions at this time, so let me throw it back to you, Jody, for uh, the next part of today's uh, program. Yeah, fantastic. And next, we yes, can you move the slide forward um, for me one, Gary? All right, perfect. So this, just wanted to um, have our our special spinner <laughs> that we get to choose a, a, a lucky participant uh, to, to win the upgrade to a Blue Sky Managed Webinar. Uh, so that includes some things uh, that we could add on to a managed webinar that you have with us uh, that would be you know, interactive lobbies, uh, attention breaks, breakout rooms, whiteboards, all of that to really add that level of engagement that makes uh, a webinar so successful. And moving especially from maybe an uh, in-person uh, event to being able to, to do that online. So with that said, uh, Gary, do you want to spin so we can find a winner? All right, there we go. Susanna Martinez. You are the winner. Yay. So hopefully you can take advantage of that. Um, feel free to, to reach out and we can talk about that. Um, so I think we are ready to, to wrap everything up. I, I just want to quickly say thank you so much um, to Heather for uh, being here. She has a busy schedule where she's actually getting ready for the Higher Logic Super Forum. Um, hopefully you guys will be attending that. Uh, Blue Sky will be there as well. Uh, so, so thank you, Heather. Absolutely, my pleasure. And then, Awesome. And and thank you, all of you, for, for attending. We sure appreciate it. Thank you, Heather and Jody, for a great presentation on behalf of Blue Sky eLearn and Higher Logic. I'd also like to thank everyone else for your participation in today's event. This concludes our webinar for today. Again, thank you, and have a great rest of the day. <laughs>